Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the CUT alumni webinar in conjunction with the CRPM. Before I continue, um, can I just get like a thumbs up in the comment section if everyone is able to see me and hear me properly? I don't want to talk for the next five minutes, and it turns out only I can hear myself. All right. Thank you, Stefan. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, like I stated, welcome to the uh, CUT alumni webinar in conjunction with the CRPM. My name is Nguasana Chisa, and I will be your facilitator for today. I'm gonna be with you from now until the end of our webinar. Right, so before we get started, um, it's really important that we understand the purpose of why we're all here today and exactly what do we mean by this specific webinar that has brought us today. Now, first and foremost, our CUT alumni play an important role in the growth and sustainability of the institution. So this is why we felt it was important that we include them in this discussion, as well as other stakeholders, and of course our staff and students, in order for us to you know, spotlight the important work that the CRPM is doing and has done throughout the couple of years that it's been at the Central University of Technology. So some of us might be wondering who or what is the CRPM and what exactly does it stand for? Well, the CRPM manufactures patient-specific treatment solutions through ad additive, excuse me, manufacturing in an attempt to restore the quality of life for the patients that it serves. It was established in 1997 as a research center offering a service to industry, academia, and postgraduate students, and has approximately 750 clients on its database, as we'll later learn as the webinar continues. Furthermore, over the past 12 years, the primary focus has been on AM of patient-specific implants and devices, which have led to the first South African 3D printed hemi mandible implant in 2014. Also, that's not all. It was followed by a further seven successful AM cases, which include full and hemimexala implants. Uh, the CRPM received the ISO 13485 certification during 2016 for design and manufacturing of patient-specific titanium implants, as well as nylon cutting drill guides that are linked to 3D printing and making it the first company and university in South Africa to obtain this. So why are we here? Well, the purpose of this webinar is to basically create awareness um, amongst our alumni, staff, students, and other stakeholders about the valuable work of the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing, as well, of course, as the CSI component that is attached to their operations. The aim is, of course, to connect with the CUT alumni and to allow them to feel a sense of progress in the innovative work of their alma mater, whilst involving them with the institution in giving back or paying it forward to the South African community through the CRPM SCI project. But anywho, let me not keep you with uh, talking more about this amazing and prestigious organization to officially start the event and to officially open the webinar so that we get this dialogue started and we get more in detail on what is happening and how exactly we can assist the CRPM as well as the amazing work that has done so far. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the acting vice chancellor and principal of the Central University of Technology, Professor Albert Ngoi. Prof, the stage is yours. Prof, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you now, Prof. All right. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, uh, CUT partners, uh, CUT alumni, uh, CUT council members who are on the platform, members of the media, CUT staff and students who are on the platform, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to address you this afternoon as the Vice Chancellor and the Principal of the Central University of Technology Free State. This is indeed an extraordinary day to welcome you visually in the comfort of your visual spaces. I would like, therefore, 
to express my most profound appreciation for your visual presence on this auspicious webinar. The invitation to this event has been extended to you because we would like to forge close ties with our partners and our alumni and interact intimately on matters of our common interest. Therefore, I want to thank each of you for sacrificing your busy schedules and time to be with us today. Your presence is highly appreciated. We welcome the participation of our partners here in South Africa and from overseas joining us this afternoon. To Dr. LC from Fuchs Foundation, your foundation has been a beacon of hope for many state patients who never hoped that their dreams would come true. Over the years, the foundation changed the lives of many patients across the country to receive access to medical treatment that they would not otherwise receive. We look forward to your continued support, which we cherish. To Mr. Terry Wallace from Wallace Associate uh, in the United States. Again, Terry, welcome. And to Mr. Benjamin Bears from EOS in Germany. Please welcome to this webinar. Your association with CUT is very important and dear to us. And we are proud to be associated with you for your ongoing support and commitment to the work we are carrying out in the Center for Rapid Prototyping uh, and Manufacturing. From an institutional uh, perspective, we appreciate your meaningful participation as critical partners to the university and experts in your respective portfolios with a vested interest in the university and its work in additive manufacturing. Today's webinar is an essential platform for us to share the good work that we are doing in the sector. We are aspired by the work we do and become a leading university of technology in Africa to position CUT as a leading brand in the sector and to support our vision of becoming that university in Africa. Today's webinar is the culmination of engagements and consultations that we have had with various stakeholders intended to seek ways of supporting CRPM programs. We plan to approach business, government, and industry to rally behind our center for support. In the past, we made great strides in some of our commitments to the communities we live in. We are extremely proud of the, our Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing, the CRPM, our flagship center for additive manufacturing and rapid prototyping. About a thousand patients have been assisted through the creation of medical devices with the expertise of CRPM and the generous support of the Food Foundation, as well as the expertise of Eon and the Wallers. Some of these medical devices were the first of their kind in the country, allowing CUT to stand proudly at the forefront of the innovation in this field. Indeed, we are not only using this occasion to present the great work that we do, but also to reconnect with our alumni through its association with the CUT, like any other university. The importance of alumni, I cannot enumerate here, but to simply say that you are our ambassadors and we look upon you to connect us with the wider world. We believe that you constitute the first 
and the last line of defense for the university. And for this reason, you are advocates and ambassadors of the university, both in good and bad times. Furthermore, you, are, you add value to the governance structures of the university as critically important stakeholders. Also, remember that the alumni in your own working terrain, you can assist CUT in forming valuable networks. You can also contribute towards the achievement of the university by providing either non-material or material support or resources to the university. For example, in the way integrated learning, mentorship and development of our students. Indeed, uh, such initiatives would be a long-term investment for you and the university and would continue to bear fruits in time. It might be worth mention, uh, pointing out that the benefits would be, be mutual as the CUT remains your intellectual home where we will continuously support your personal and professional growth. And this we promise. The past few months have been, have seen the review process of our academic programs in various fields through our strategic transformation of educational programs and structures, the so-called steps. Uh, and this is meant to identify our strengths and weaknesses in curricula, in research, innovation, and the other educational processes. Though through this process, we are conceptually designing brand new, relevant, responsive and de demand-driven programs. With your involvement in the affairs of the university, you can help us to improve our course offerings constantly and to scout and recruit the best students as well as the staff. We are indeed proud of the team from CRPM for always coming up with high level ideas that constantly challenge us to reshape the quality of teaching and learning, research and innovation in this country's higher education sector. In June, we celebrated the achievement of the MedArt project, which was funded by the government at the tune of 97 million rand to develop locally produced medical devices for the industry through additive manufacturing technology so that it will reduce the country's reliance on costly imported medical devices that local hospitals can not afford. In closing then, we at CUT wish to see a more critical role among our alumni in supporting the university, and most importantly, is stimulating commercial activities for the third income stream of the university. To conclude, I call upon you to join hands and work with us to bring life to the socio-economic development agenda of CUT in the central region of South Africa. I thank you and I wish you good deliberations in the webinar. Program director, you are right. muted. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Um, sorry about that. I was having a bit of um, some technical issues there on my part. Thank you so much for those uh, inspirational words. You know, um, an event is not truly completed until our, you know, principal officially opens it and uh, inspires us with words that we can all carry going throughout. Right. Um, with all that being said, in emphasizing the importance of the CRPM, ladies and gentlemen, please note that we do have a donations and contributions page, which you are welcome to click on and to contribute or donate whatever that you can toward the CRPM and continuing the wonderful work that they are doing. I believe the link has been made available on our chat box, and I believe it is also available on our comment section on YouTube, as well as our Facebook page. So as the 
uh, webinar is continuing, please do feel free to just click on it and just give whatever you have from a hundred rand to a thousand rand to a hundred thousand rand. Really, it's it's really important that we continue to work. Right. Um, up next, without wasting any further ado, well, we are going to cut into uh, a small clip that kind of like shows us an idea of more of the amazing and phenomenal work that the CRPM is doing, as well as some of the products that it offers toward um, the CUT community and, of course, the South African society. So, uh, Stefan, over to you. Cancer of the head and neck is in your face. Everybody sees it. These people are walking around with mid faces that have been resected. So many plus this is better than we look at Om my niet samen te leven en te gaan. Maar allemaal zijn voor je kijk. Ik weet niet, ik wil zeker zo zelf maar te vliegen. The Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing Initiative gives state patients access to the latest and most sophisticated technology for reconstructive surgery. By providing world-class surgical intervention, the Center radically improves the lives of its beneficiaries. We assisted more than 60 patients in the past four years. And that is why I do what I do. Amazing work indeed, amazing work indeed. The CRPM, I saw it for myself um, earlier this month when I had a visit at their facility. Some of the work that they're doing is indeed changing lives. And um, it's just so interesting how we never really think about the kind of struggles that people go through and the kind of experiences that they have medically. And when you see organizations like the CRPM actually, you know, having an act of change in how medicine in this country is revolutionizing and how technology is changing, not only at the CUT, but in the technological spectrum in South Africa, it's really, really amazing. And that's, of course, what we're going to talk about. Again, a reminder that we are, we do have a donations and contributions link on our chat box and on our comments. So please do go and comment contribute there because we are trying to uh, continue the work that the CRPM is doing. So if you want to be a part of the change, if you want to be a stakeholder and, you know, a change agent to ensuring that the medicine continues and lives are saved, patients are happier and reconstruction surgery in South Africa, as we know, is changed and evolving. Please do make sure that you do click on the donations page that's been made there on our chat box. Right. I am not alone today. I am, of course, joined by um, our amazing uh, participants, our amazing audiences, but more specifically, our panelists, right? We have various speakers from uh, the various departments as well as industries that have contributed to CRPM's work, as well as the growth and the sustainability of the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing. So I'm just going to introduce them. I'm just going to read some of their bios. And um, of course, I'm just going to introduce them. And then after that, we're going to get into the real conversation that we're having. So ladies and gentlemen, in my panelists today, I have I have Professor Kules van der Heever. I, ex, I, ex, uh, I apologize in advance if I'm going to butcher <laughs> some people's names and surnames. I'll try my best to ensure that I get everyone's names right, everyone's name right, right? We have Prof. Kules van der Heever, who is the leading prosthodontist in South Africa, specializing in maxillofacial prosthetics. Professor van der Heever distinguishes themselves by outstanding and selfish leadership. Through the dedication of an extraordinary amount of time and professional skills, he is improving the oral health of underserviced populations in South Africa. Professor van der Heever is currently employed as by the Central University of Technology as a clinical advisor. Professor van der Heever, you're welcome. Can we all see Prof there? Can you just wave for us, Prof, so that uh, we all see you? Uh, good afternoon. I'll thank you, thank you, Prof. We just wanted to see your face, thank you. Right, we're also joined by Mrs. Princess Moshwana, 
who is a CUT CRPM facial reconstruction beneficiary. She is 31 years old from Lanasia, south of Johannesburg. She is a beautiful young woman who's always dreamt of becoming a model. Princess is currently working for a bank and is studying toward their Bachelor of Commerce degree. So Miss Mashwana, you are also welcome. I'm not sure if she's joined us yet, but let me just, um, yeah, I think she's still on her way. She should join us shortly. Yeah, she should join us shortly. Um, and then we are joined by Dr. Rian Els. We are joined by Dr. Rian Els, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Carl and Emily Fuchs Foundation, a local private philanthropic trust fund, which he has managed over the past 25 years. The foundation focuses its funding in four focus areas, which include child care and youth development, health services, the higher education programs, technology development, innovation, and entrepreneurship. It recently funded some of the exciting developments of the CUT Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing as part of its CEFF's 50th anniversary project, a funding cycle that stretched over five years and in which the CRPM was awarded the prize as the best overall initiative nationally. Dr. Els also serves on the Council of the Private Philanthropy Philanthropy Association of South Africa, the umbrella organization for private philanthropists, both locally and internationally. Dr. Rian, you're welcome. Thank you, good Sarana. Thank you, Doc. We are then joined by Mr. Johan Els, who holds a bachelor's degree in human biology and an honors degree in medical science, specializing in anatomy and cell morphology from the University of the Free State. They also hold an MTech in mechanical engineering from the Central University of Technology. Johan started his career in 2007 as a research assistant at the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing at the CUT and was appointed in his current position as the CRPM's operations manager in 2017. They have to date been heavily involved in the design and manufacturing of patient-specific 3D printed titanium implants, including the first hemimandibular titanium prosthesis implanted in South Africa back in 2013. Johan has sound knowledge and experience with quality management systems after being actively involved during the ISO 13485 certification process of CRPM since 2016. Mr. Johan Els, you're welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. And then we are last but not least joined by Mr. Bruce Chiramurere, who is the Deputy Director for Health Innovation at the Department of Science and Innovation in South Africa. They are responsible for the implementation of the health component of the bioeconomy strategy for South Africa. Mr. Chiramurere's focus is on creating an enabling environment for health R&D to take place in South Africa. The focus is on research and innovation that leads to discovery and evaluation of new drugs and treatment regimes. The development of new vaccines and new robust diagnostics for the identified diseases or conditions, as well as the development of medical devices. Mr. Chiramurere also assists in the establishment of local pharmaceutical manufacturing. This includes the local manufacturing of generic and new drugs, as well as establishing facilities to encourage the development of diagnostics and medical devices. Mr. Bruce Chiramurere, you're also welcome, sir. Thank you, Program Director, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. So um, let's get right into it, shall we? Let's get right into the conversation. As we have all established, today we're looking, we're creating an awareness about the CRPM, as well as everything that it has done thus far and the work that it is continuing. That is why we're here to assist in continuing this work and ensuring that change does happen and everything happens the way we intended it to in terms of medicine. Now, I'm going to go a little bit into the, um, the, the Carl and Emily Fuchs Foundation, right? 
um, CUT found itself honored, or rather found itself luckily being part of the CEFF's 50th anniversary project and being funded for over five years. Now, uh, Dr. Els, this question is towards you specifically, or rather this um, open-ended discussion. During the initial call for proposals back in 2016 for the Fuchs Golden Years project, what specifically made you choose or decide on CUT? Because I can imagine a lot of organizations, a lot of institutions, a lot of um, health facilities applied for it or rather were interested in it. What exactly made CUT stand out from all of these and was honored to get the funding in the first place? And Kusana, the um, first correction, a, a tiny little correction. They were not honored. We were honored to have met them. That's the right way around. Now, some background first to how this came about is just the, the shortest history of the foundation is that it was established in August 1969, so a little more than 50 years ago. Um, and we've been doing the, the grant making and development work funded by the organization over that period. I've only been there for, for half of that time, but the past 25 years. But in that period that I've uh, managed the foundation, we uh, structured the grant making strategy of the organization into four focus areas. That's child care, health services, higher education, and then innovation and technology. Now it's only this last one, innovation and technology, that is of, uh, at stake here this afternoon, is relevant to our webinar. And obviously is also the category in which the CLPM applied um, for their funding at the time. Now the grant making programs of this foundation um, that uh, implement that particular strategy are also organized into a number of categories. I won't bore you with that, but again, there's one of those categories that is relevant and that is the so-called national flagship projects of the foundation. Now, a national flagship project is a uh, typically a four, five year funding undertaking. So it's a large project normally in which we predetermine the theme or the topic for funding. We then call nationally typically again for proposals or applications. And then from those, as you put it, many applications received normally, we select for those implementation partners who finally get funding and then proceed to implement the projects. Now, in the particular year that the uh, CRPM was funded in that cycle, what made it extraordinarily special was that it was done in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the foundation. So the entire scheme during that round was designed to showcase the very best of the work in each of those four focus areas that I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation. And the CRPM applied in the innovation and technology development category with its changing uh, faces, changing lives project. Now to answer your question more directly, I'm gonna quote one or two figures quickly. In that particular round, we received 598 applications from various organizations. So let's just call it 600 applications of which 71 belong to the innovation and technology development category. So the total number of people who were competing, if you'd like, for the funding in that category amounted to 71 institutions. Of those uh, 600 applications, we first shortlisted only 40 applications, that's 10 per category in the full category. We whittled that down to 24 or six per category and eventually had only three uh, um, nominees per category. So total recipients, 12 of which the CRPM was then one. Now, why did we select them? I went back on and looked at the application earlier today and I made a few notes. And here is what I'd like to say were some of the reasons why they got selected. Firstly, an absolutely solid application. And by that, I simply mean that there were clear outcomes with a most measurable um, budget uh, uh, linked to the, the goals of that particular project. The second one is, it was an application that carefully followed the guidelines and requirements 
um, in, in term, specified for this particular application. We refer that as funders, as funders, we refer to that typically as the matching principle. Um, the third point is the credibility of the applicant. And here we make reference specifically to the financial accountability, the systems in place that you manage so well, the um, reporting uh, capability of your organization, your track record and experience, those are the ones um, that, that uh, added to the credibility assessment. So that last one was the quality of the work, the track record of the CPRM speaks for itself. And then the two other more uh, very important ones, but the, the second last one is a slightly less tangible element. And this refers to the ability to build trust-based relationships. And that doesn't happen over, overnight. But the, the center has proven itself in this particular uh, dimension. And then finally, to finish your, my long-winded answer to your question is the projected impact. This was a real promise, not an, an, an uh, enthusiastic, over-promising, under-delivery, um, a desperate attempt to obtain funding. This was real, authentic, with measurable impact in the real lives or in the lives of some very real patients, real people. Thanks, Nkusana. Thank you, Doc. Real measurable impact in people's lives. Real measurable impact. I love that because that is indeed um, everything that they've done. Um, every time I look at the clients that the CRPM has assisted over the years, and every time I look at their work and the impact their work has had on these individuals, as well as um, the various institutions of uh, medicine that they've worked with, it's just amazing how people's lives have changed. Because, you know, normally when someone... Um, how can I put it when there there becomes like a problem with you, whether it has to do with your anatomy or whether it has to do with your body? A lot of people think that it's just like a facial thing or a cosmetic thing, but there are also psychological effects that go into play, social effects rather that go into play. And it's so unfortunate that a lot of these patients, some of them, are uh, come from disadvantaged backgrounds. So to have you know. Um, organizations like the CRPM through the CUT that are going out there and assisting people that are disadvantaged or patients that couldn't have otherwise received the care or the information elsewhere is just amazing and really, really important. So we definitely thank you, Dr. Els, for, you know, seeing CUT and, you know, all, like you said, having it as an honor to you guys for you to work with an organization that is selflessly devoting so much of its time to assisting South Africa, as well as, um, you know, progressing CUT as an institute and as a university of technology. Uh, Prof. Funda Hiaba, I'm going to come to you now. As part of your line of work, and some of the projects that you've been involved with, right? You've been involved in similar cases of what we're talking about in terms of reconstructive surgery and in terms of, you know, facial reconstruction and, and whatnot. Do you think uh, that there is a high level of need in this regard with limited support or, or what are your thoughts regarding the line of work and projects which you guys are involved in and in terms of the need and the support that is required? Um, we have a huge need in this country for uh, help to these patients. You must remember these are the poorest of the poor people. Um, and unfortunately, the health system uh, can't help them. We have financial problems. We have lack of ICU beds. We have lack of theater time. And many of these patients just can't be helped. They have to wait and wait. And, and sometimes become, they become inoperable. They become socially unacceptable. And uh, they lose their lives because we, they just don't have the financial means to pay for the treatment. And it's, it's not only in the free state. I work all over the country, and I can assure you, uh, wherever I go, I find the same problem. 
hundreds and hundreds of these people that cannot be treated with a very poor outcome. Over to you. Oh, thank you, Prof. I thought um, you couldn't hear us or something. Thank you so much. And that is so true. Um, like I mentioned earlier, that's that's something that I did pick up on as well, that a, a lot of these patients, some of them, most of them rather, are poor. They have no financial means. And we know that the um, health department in this country is really, um, it's currently been under the, the microscope because a lot of hospitals, you'll find that there's a backlog of patients. Some patients die while awaiting treatment. And in some cases, you know, people will receive the surgery that they need. And then after, after the surgery, it doesn't really matter um, aesthetically how you are or whatever the case might be, as long as the issue has been solved or as long as the ailment has been removed. But like I mentioned earlier, there are some psychological and social instances that come with that. And usually no one really tends to them. But in exactly the CRPM, changing these lives and changing these faces. I want to bring this question to you, Mr. Chiramurere. Would you say the positive outcome of the Changing Faces, Changing Lives project is the one that supported your decision to approve the CUT's application for the establishment of the MedEd demonstrator? Would you say this had something to do with it, as we've mentioned before, um, the work that they've been pushing forward? Well, uh, thank you for the question, Program Director. Uh, well, it's it's quite evident, really, that uh, the the impact that additive manufacturing continues to make in changing people's lives is just quite enormous, you know. And what is important, you know, to note is the fact that the development of medical device industry as well as the development of additive manufacturing as a key technology to advance the South African manufacturing industry is actually listed as a priority in a number of you know, government strategic documents as well as other you know, uh, government initiatives. So now the application or the funding proposal that was submitted by CUT to the Department of Science and Innovation was quite to bridge the innovation chasm in the use of additive manufacturing for medical devices. And I say for medical devices, you know. So now, uh, so we, we have developed a, what we call the National Bioeconomy Strategy. So it's led by the Department of Science and Innovation. So, and we, we've published it in 2014. So now the strategy identifies health, agri, industry, and environment, as well as IKS, that is your indigenous knowledge system, as the economic sectors that are more likely to benefit from the implementation of this strategy. So now, with regards to health, the strategy's objective is really to support and strengthen the country's local RDR, that is research development and innovation, and manufacturing capabilities so with regards to you know, the development of drugs, development of vaccines, development of diagnostics, and the development of medical devices, so that we are then able to address the quadruple burden of diseases that the country is facing. So now the CUT's application or, or the proposal, it aligned very well with our bioeconomy strategy. And, and quite honestly, I mean, the. The, the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing's capabilities in the design and manufacturing of, you know, these patient-specific implants through their 3D printing technology. I mean, for us, it, it, it has really undergone a significant strides, and I think this has already been mentioned, you know. Now, and, and the support, you know, the, that the center has been receiving from the Fook Foundation which we have had for the Changing Faces, Changing Lives project. For us, it just set the tone. And I recall in one of the meetings that we had at the uh, CRPM to discuss this funding proposal 
that was submitted to the department. You know, you, you can just tell the immediate impact the project has had. You know, it was just quite impressive. And, and through the project, the lives of so many ordinary people have been changed for the better. So, so yes, in short, the, yes, the positive outcomes of this project, you know, played a significant role in ensuring that we approve, you know, the funding proposal that was submitted to the department in order to establish this med ed demonstrator. Thank you, sir. That is indeed, that is indeed true. Uh, the work that they have done has gone such a long way, as mentioned by Prof previously, that um, a lot of these people come from poor backgrounds. And we all know that the health department in this country is has been receiving quite a lot of um, backlash, so to speak, from society on not really being able to cater to everyone. So the fact that the bridge is not only through healthcare, but through technology as well, which of course accelerates the development and growth of the country, as well as attending to those that need is really, really important. Something that definitely CRPM has definitely contributed toward. A reminder again that you do have a link to donate and contribute on the chat box. So you are more than welcome to click on the link and contribute whatever you can that your donation is definitely going to make a difference in the life of someone who might you know desperately be seeking that life-changing surgery or desperately be seeking that treatment or medical device that can change their lives a lot of people have um definitely benefited from the work of the CRPM. So please do put your hand quite deep into your pocket and contribute whatever you can and donate whatever you can so that the CRPM and the work that they're doing continues. Because it's like uh, Dr. Els uh, mentioned earlier, it's not just another university creative that has been used to get money or whatever the case might be. This is actual change through, th through uh, a tenth of hospitals across the country that's changing patients' lives, that's changing people's lives who would otherwise not be, be able to uh, afford it or be able to get it. Uh, if you've just joined us, you are welcome to the CUT alumni and CRPM webinar. We are talking about the CRPM as well as the work that they're doing. And if you feel that you can donate or contribute, please do feel free to do so. My name is Nkosana Chesa, and we are continuing with the conversation on exactly how we can do what we can do rather to assist and ensure that change does happen and we change the faces and lives of CUT, um, CUT and of course society. I would now like to take this question to um, Mr. Johan uh, Els, right? What is unique about the Central University of Technology in solving this challenge of patient specific solutions? Like what's the unique a perspective, so to speak, that CUT took in ensuring that it bridges this gap and it solves this eminent problem that patients, like the ones that CRPM serves, are, you know, their lives are made better. Osana, I believe um, CUT through it, the CRPM is, is really able to provide a solution using state-of-the-art technology uh, supported by partners such as DSI that's backed up by years and years of, of research and development, I believe close to 25 years around. And together with a very unique and tailor-made quality management system that's internationally recognized, this is what really allows us to offer our products and services with confidence. And partnerships, um, as we mentioned, uh, like that with Carl and Emily Fuchs Foundation, DSI, and other role players from industry, some of them present here during the webinar as well. Um, that's what really is essential to the success of, um, achieved thus far. And for that, we are really, really thankful. And I believe that the one thing that's really unique is, is the very passionate team of people that, that makes this possible. On the leadership of Dr. Harry Boyson and with the other support we are receiving from, from CUT management, you know, this is not a, a one-man band. We we really make, uh, we depend heavily on, on the very passionate team that's behind this uh, initiative and, and all the work that we are doing. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Els, and work, amazing work indeed that you are doing. Um, we are joined today on our panel, as mentioned earlier, by one of the beneficiaries 
all of this work that CUT and CRPM is continuing. And we're going to also get her opinion or talk to her on exactly how uh, the work that this organization is doing changed her life and it changed her outlook uh, in understanding that these are real people who've actually benefited from this program and who can really attest and testify to the amazing work and the change that CRPM has contributed in their lives. Mrs. Princess Mushwana, quite an interesting bio and quite an inspirational story that you have. Would you say your future outlook changed, your future outlook on life rather changed after your unfortunate incident that, of course, prompted the intervention by the CRPM. How would you say your future outlook on life changed after that um, incident took place in your life? Ms. Moshwana, can you switch on your, your mic? We can see you, but we cannot hear you. Ms. Mashwana, can you please switch on your mic? Okay. We are still unable to hear you. We can we can still not hear you, Ms. Mashwana. Right, we're just waiting for her to just um, take care of her technical issues, and I think she'll be able to. Are you good now, Ms. Mashwana? All right, it appears we've lost her. Yeah, it appears we've lost her. Let's just give her a couple of minutes and then when she's back, she'll just uh, signify that she's she's all she's all sorted and yeah. Okay. I hope everyone is donating while in the meanwhile we're waiting for Ms. Mishwana to uh, rejoin us. I hope we are all donating colleagues and everyone going into the link, please donate as much as you can, contribute as much as you can. We need this work to continue. We need to be the change that we want to see in our society. And of course, CUT as an institute of technology, as an institute of change, this of course goes without saying that it's an important initiative, it's an important project that needs to be supported by all means. If there are any stakeholders from any major organizations, please do feel free to visit the CRPM website, which I believe is also available on the chat box, or either the link will lead you to the website and you can just see there in terms of who you would need to contact or who you would need to talk to if you want to also be involved in the changes and in the, you know, in the projects that the CRPM is leading. And later on, we'll also um, show some of the products, the, the medical devices, as well as some of the other devices that have been the work of the CRPM over the years. I personally was surprised when I discovered the CRPM because I never knew that my own school, my alma mater, has um, such an amazing organization that is going beyond what we learn in the lecture halls and whatever, but is actually applying that change Right. Um, while we're still waiting, I actually I, I think I'll revert back to you, uh, Dr. Els. Right. Um, during the, the the foundation, CFF's foundation's 50th anniversary celebration back in August 2019, uh, the Central University of Technology was awarded the grand prize for the best performance.
Sorry, everybody. It seems like we lost connection with um, Kozana. Shall we wait for Kosana to join again? Or do you want me to respond to the question? Um, hi, Rian. I think respond to the question. Kosana just informed me that he's having some technical difficulties. He's trying to get back into the, the webinar. So if you could okay. respond. Thank you so I'll, much. I'll go slowly to give him some time. To <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Kosana made reference to, I, I'm not sure what everybody heard and where, we, where, where you lost him, but uh, I got the, the question, he was making reference to the, um, to the fact that the prize was awarded, the, the grand prize as it was referred to, was awarded to the centre at the 50th anniversary celebration ceremony. And this is quite correct. Um, in addition to the funding received or allocated over the four or five year period to the center, there was also an additional uh, million rands that we uh, termed the grand prize. Um, and we'd never done this as a foundation before, where we made the um, beneficiaries, as it were, compete for a, a final additional grant that was to be made to the best performing project at the end of the, the funding cycle. And um, it should be remembered, I think, that this was announced at the um, celebration ceremony, but it actually was the culmination, of course, of a long uh, four, five year period of um, implementing a, a very formal monitoring and evaluation process but, uh, over that period, which consisted of a, a number of formal progress reports being submitted by the center, center to the funder, a number of on-site visits by ourselves uh, to the project, um, panel reviews during which Dr. Harry Boyston and uh, Mr. Johan Els would arrive in either Johannesburg or Cape Town, I remember, and they would make presentations and submissions to, to panels that reviewed their progress. And then finally, there was an independent assessment panel appointed for the final assessment um, at the end of a project. Now, this panel consisted of some of the most senior development specialists in the country, an external panel to the foundation, and they then selected the overall winner. Now, what is maybe important to remember here is that the panel assessed the participants on a number of predetermined dimensions, but these included such important issues as the design relevance of the projects, the implementation effectiveness and reporting, meeting the reporting requirements of a funder. The third dimension was the actual project outcomes or the level of goal attainment. Second last one was the cost efficiency and financial management of a funding. And then the last one was probably the most important one, which is impact and resilience. Now the design and development of, and the manufacture of novel tailor-made, often 3D printed artificial implantation devices and prosthesis. In this instance, ticks two equally important boxes into our thinking. The one is the innovation and technology development, it speaks for itself. Cutting edge leading technology development by the center. But the second element is where it comes in for us, and that's the human impact. So the real benefits in Kusana that we referred to earlier on in the, in the lives of real people. Now, in, in, in making a closing comment as to why were they selected, I think there's a little quote from the chairperson of the assessment panel, and I'd like to quote her in, uh, from the speech that she made in handing across the award to uh, making the award, should I say, probably, um, during the ceremony. Um, Prof. Kulis was there and Harry, I think, jointly um, received that award. She said, and I quote from that speech, humility, the human touch, and the real tangible 
the manifestation of passion. These were the characteristics that set the CRPN apart from the rest. Humility, human touch, the real tangible manifestation of passion. That's what sets you apart. Thank you, Kasana. Wow, wise words, wise words indeed. Humility and impact and real human connection, which it, all, it, it goes to show that the team behind the CRPM consists of people who are really passionate about what they do, people who actually love what they do. And you know, I remember um, a doctor once said that if you work with people, if you are a healthcare worker or a doctor or a healthcare provider, surgeon, whatever you name it, if you work, in the health and medicine industry, and you don't have a love for people, it won't matter. It won't matter because you need to have a love for people. You need to have a love for what you're doing in order for it to actually have an actual impact on people and to actually change people's lives, right? And speaking of changing lives, I'm told that uh, Miss Mashwana is back and we're just going to pick up from the last question that I addressed to you, Ms. Mishwana, on how would you describe your future outlook on life after the unfortunate incident that happened to you? Thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Um, but can you hear me now? We can hear you perfectly now. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Oh, wow. Life is really unpredictable. Never have I ever thought that in my early 20s, I wouldn't have teeth. I mean, that's the time where most of us are trying to figure out that life thing, especially with our careers. And imagine, the image means everything in your early 20s. When I lost my teeth and part of my jaws, I was hopeless. I had lost my smile, meaning I had lost my confidence. I hated socializing. I didn't even want to meet new people because the moment I started talking, they would stay, and it made me very uncomfortable. My immediate family became my best friends because I was more comfortable around them. There was no COVID then, so I didn't even have much to hide myself with. So life became very difficult back then. It was really horrible on my side. To top it up, I didn't even have finances to pay for the surgery because I was told it was expensive. So that's how my life was after this whole incident. And um, <clears throat> do you mind um, telling us about the incident on exactly what transpired for, for that to happen? Um, what happened was I was shot. It was a gunshot wound. I got shot while I was um, driving. It was an anti-hijacking. Um, I went to hospital, and then I was told that I would lose... Um, when I had lost one tooth then when I arrived at hospital, but the following day after the surgery, I was told that I lost more tooth, more tooth, actually. So, and part of my jaw also. So... That's really what happened. It was just a gunshot. Um, two people tried to steal the car, but then they didn't win in stealing that car. However, they just took away my tooth and the part of my jaws. So that's how they took my part of my life also. So, so they basically stripped you of your dignity and they changed your, the, the, the course of your life as you knew it. Can you repeat that, sir? I'm saying they basically, um, you know, they, they stripped you of your dignity and changed the course of your life as you knew it. Yes, which is true. They did. Mm. Um, like I said, I was still very young then. Um, I was trying to figure out my life back then. So mm. in that period of time, it's the time whereby... You want to go out with your friends. You want to socialize more. You want to leave. But then it was so difficult for me to do all those things that people my age back then were doing. Mm. 
my life stopped. As you're saying that they stripped part of my life. Yes, they did. My life has stopped completely. I changed. My life took a U-turn. I, I was isolating myself. I didn't want anyone around me except for my family members. Well, I went to work because I didn't have a choice as I was a breadwinner at home. I had to go to work. But if I had a choice, I would stay at home and not work and do anything. I would have been at home until I got my test back. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Prof. Pandan Hiaba, usually in, in, when we hear stories like um, Ms. Moshwana's stories, normally treatment will get issued away or rather get reserved for people that are financially stable because it is deemed as cosmetic surgery and not really an elective surgery that's necessary or whatever the case might be. Um, so with, with that being said, hearing what she went through and hearing everything that happened to her and how her life was disrupted because of this, how psychologically she was disrupted because of this um, incident, why is patient-specific treatment necessary? Um, with these extensive cases, it is very important to have a patient-specific implant for your specific patient. If the lesions are small, or if it's a small trauma lesion, you can use the uh, ordinary stock uh, appliances that are available. But the patients that we are treating have quite extensive defects because of the size of the cancer or the tumors or the trauma, trauma that they've gone through. So it is not something that you can that you can fix or you can treat or you can reconstruct with some, something that's that's available. You have to use CT material and uh, you have to make custom make an implant for a patient to be able to restore the patient and to Im improve their quality of life again, to put them back in the community so that they can so they don't have to hide away and they can move again around again in community and live life as a normal person. Thank you for that, Prof. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to come back to um, I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Michel, uh, Mr. Tiramorere. Um, would you say that the synergy that's created between government academia and industry, do you see that as a part of MedAd and does it support your, ma uh, your uh, mandate within the DSI? Uh, thank you, Kosana. Indeed. And maybe let me start by saying, you know, uh, that collaboration is really at the heart of the bioeconomy strategy that I've mentioned, that we published it in 2014. Now, the fact that, you know, in developing this method, it enables institution like CUT, you know, and with its academic partners, local companies, to then work together to scale up, you know, those innovative medical device products. It's what we as government, you know, advocate for. You know, this is what we want to see happening. You know, so now, and as government and in particular as the Department of Science and Innovation, you know, we have to create, you know, this enabling and conducive environment for, you know, health researches to take place in the country. And if as a country, really, we, we, if we are to compete internationally and we want to develop this local medi uh, medical device industry with appropriate infrastructure, with relevant expertise and skills, then the med and uh, demonstrator is what we really require. So now, uh, in in building, you know, the South African health innovation system, we are using what we call the 
quadruple helix model, you know, so that we are then able to integrate all role players. You know, you've got to have your government, you, you need academia, you need industry, and you also need, importantly, civil society. And, and we have to integrate this into sort of a unified and coordinated fashion. Now, this model, this quadruple helix model, advocates for industry operating as a seat of production. You know, you have to have government who will then provide the framework for secure contractual relationships. And universities such as CUT, you know, they, they, they have to provide new knowledge, you know, innovation, technology, and then we do need the end user perspective, you know, that is your civil society, who will then imp provide inputs as users of, you know, those innovations. So, so, I mean, you can see the kind of working together that we really want to see happening. And therefore, you know, this synergy that has been created between ourselves as government, you know, the CUT as institution of, you know, learning, you know, the, your industry partners, which you've been managing as part of the MedEd project. I mean, for us, it was just the right ingredient for success and it, it indeed supported our mandate as the department. Thank you, sir. Um, I wanna to touch more on the end user perspective and I'm gonna come back to you, Mrs. Mashwana. Um, Mr. Chilamurera mentioned that institutions like CUT assist in ensuring that there's, you know, society is also involved in this and that they provide some kind of change and some kind of, you know, development for society through the various services and projects that the CRPM runs. But before we get it, we, I come to you with that question. I would like to remind our colleagues once more that we are running a fundraising initiative on the CRPC, the CRPM rather website. So you are more than welcome to click on the link. The link I believe has been made available on our chat box. It's been made available on our Zoom chat box if you're joining us via Zoom on our comment section if you are watching us from YouTube. So please, please, please just click on the link put your hand as deep as you can into your pockets or into your coffers and make sure that you contribute to the amazing work that the CRPM is doing. Anything can help. Anything that you can contribute goes a long way in ensuring that lives are changed. Uh, people uh, get off the waiting list off of hospitals. We know the situation in our public hospitals. Most of these recipients are from backgrounds that are disadvantaged. So unfortunately, they do have to depend on the public health services, which in some cases doesn't really fully cater to their needs or fully, you know, immediately respond to what they require. So please, if you donate to institutions or organizations like the CRPM, it does go a long way in helping someone out there get a smile or get an arm or get um, cured of cancer or whatever the case might be. Now, coming back to you, uh, Ms. Moshwana, <clears throat> how would you say the intervention from CUT CRPM changed your outlook on life and the future? How did everything change after CUT intervened with what you were going through? Okay, thank you again for that question, sir. Uh, what CUT did for me was life-changing. I am happy to be alive in times where technology plays a big role in our lives. If it wasn't for technology, I would probably still be toothless as we speak. I mean, I didn't just lose my teeth, but part of my jaws also. I was once told that it would be difficult for me to put implants because of what happened to my jaws. But today I have teeth, I've got my smile back, I always tell everyone that was involved that they didn't just give me my smile back, but they gave me my life back. I know that COVID is still around, but when it was announced that wearing masks is no longer mandatory, I was one of the people who were excited about not wearing them anymore. I mean, I have nothing to hide anymore. So I really got my life back, and I am thankful for CGT for what they did for me. Thank you. Thank you. It does really sound like everything became better after they intervened. Um, 
You are more than welcome to also pose any questions or comments that you might have in the chat box or on the comment section. If you have any questions for any of our panelists from uh, the DSI to Ms. Moshwana, to Professor Fandanheva, to Mr. Els, to Dr. Rian, by all means, you're more than welcome to just pose your questions and we will definitely make sure, I will definitely make sure that I engage your questions and find out what the panelists feel or what they would like to, uh, how they would like to answer you. So please, do pose your questions on the comment section on the chat box and we will definitely have a section where we engage these questions and these comments in order for us to be all involved in this discussion regarding the amazing work that the CRPM is doing. Now, speaking about assisting and changing perspectives and helping patients, um, Mr. Johan Els, I'd like to come to you on this. What other services besides um, AM patient services and um, you know medical devices and, and, and so forth. What other services does the CUTCRPM offer that people may not be aware of? Prasanna, thank you. Yes, um, apart from the social involvement, CRPM is also providing 3D printing services to role players in a number of other industries, such as aerospace, consumer goods, automotive, jewelry, architecture, medical devices, we've heard, uh, just to name a few. It, the, the technology is really not limited to any specific field and, and your imagination is really the limit of, of where the technology can be applied. Our services are really open to, to any company or individual requiring 3D printing uh, or components or parts and, and we welcome any interested parties to please get in touch with us to see how 3D printing can really add value to to what they are doing, their products and their services. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Els. Um, and uh, Dr. Rian, coming back to you, based on your engagement with the Central University of Technology, would the CEFF recommend CUT to a prospective funder based on your engagement and your experience with them? Would you guys recommend, recommend CUT to a prospective funder? Do you have any other silly questions? Prasanna, <laughs> um, seriously, uh, the short answer is most definitely. Mm. Um, and I can summarize that for a, a whole number of reasons. I think I, we've alluded to a whole lot of them this afternoon. But in summary, it's the quality of work. It's about the excellence, uh, the excellent standards, the internationally um, recognize standards to which the center works. The, the, the next one that comes to mind is the cutting edge technology. The leading position assumed in developing uh, this technology, that which is new, which is different, and which is better. Then from a funder's perspective, it's, a, it's about accurate record keeping and or accounting, I suppose, and reporting, fulfilling one's reporting obligations. That's very important, obviously, if one's looking for funding. Equally so is, the, is building trust-based relationships. We've also alluded to those. Um, trust-based relationships, which is worth a lot more than money. And then your unmade reference to the dedication specifically of the team. It's not about one person's work. It's about a whole team of people who are working together, committed to the cause. And then finally, it is about impact. And with that, I simply mean the difference we make in other people's lives. So those are the reasons that if another funder were to ask us, for example, why would we recommend this particular beneficiary, if you'd like, partner organization of the Fuchs Foundation, those would be the reasons that we would present with great confidence in recommending the center for further funding. Thanks, Nkusam. Thank you, Dr. Els. Thank you so much. Wise words. Um, he, he basically said it all. Everything that you might possibly be looking for as a funder, as a CSI uh, you know, enthusiast or whatnot, CUTCRPM has. So please, 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 whatever you can do, whatever organization that you're a part of, if you want to be involved, please do so because they are one of a kind. 
quite literally, and they are changing lives, changing faces, and basically changing the face of medication or medicine rather in Africa. As we heard earlier, when I was reading their credits, they have been the first of many here in South Africa, as well as in Africa. They are honestly one of the best. Uh, but now we're just going to cut to another short video that's going to showcase um, what the CRPM, some of the products that the CRPM has, and some of the work that the CRPM um, has done. So for some of us that are still maybe have just joined in and are just wondering who is the CRPM, what exactly do they do, we're just going to run another clip that's just going to give you guys perspective. Once more, please, please, please do not forget to click on the donation link and to click on the um uh, the link and the website if you do want to get involved. Stefan, you can roll the bumper. The Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing, known as CRPF, was established as part of a research initiative at the Central University of Technology in the Free State. Since its inception in 1997, CRPM has grown into an industry-leading 3D printing center. CRPM was the first additive manufacturing center in Africa to receive ISO 13485 certification for the design and manufacture of 3D printed medical devices. CRPM offers services to various industries such as consumer products, automotive, aerospace, architects, jewelers and healthcare. Right. And there you have it, folks. That's CRPM, the first of its kind in many, many things. We're now going to cut into any questions, answers, and comments from the audience. As I stated earlier, that as the audience, you're welcome to ask the panelists anything, and we'll get right into it. Another special request that I've just been told to make to specifically the panelists is for us to, for everyone, please switch on their videos. Um, all the panelists, can you briefly please switch on your video so that we can um, see you guys as well as hear you guys. We would really, really appreciate that if your videos would be off. Specifically toward the panelists, I um, would really, really appreciate this. Right, so um, in looking at some of the comments that we have or some of the questions, um, I see there that uh, someone quoted Dr. Alice's uh, quote and said, humility, the human touch, the real manifestation of passion is what sets CRPM apart. Words that are truly touching. And someone also says there, may we all adopt humility and continue changing faces, changing lives at CUT. We also acknowledge the Alumni Association and Executive Committee, thank you so much, who of course made this uh, webinar, uh, webinar possible. And um, someone also, asking there. Um, I'm so sorry what happened for what happened to you, Princess. I cannot even begin to imagine how you must have felt. You are so brave. If I were to identify someone in the community who would benefit from your services, I think this is toward you, Mr. Mr. Else, Mr. Johan Else. Someone asks, if I were to identify someone in the community who would benefit from CRPM services, how do I get them to you? Is there a certain procedure that has to be followed? So I think, uh, Mr. Else, I think you can take that one. Thank you, Kosama. Yes. Um... I would say uh, get in touch with us uh, either via email or with um, by phone. And then um, it's really important that uh, Prof. Kielis has an assessment of the patient and see to what degree intervention is, is required. And then uh, we can make an assessment and take things from there. Thank you. Okay. There you heard it. You can just go to their website or you can just call them and then they'll be able to assist you. And then another question says, does the CRPM allow or offer guided tours? I am asking this because our office is planning to host reunions or homecoming events and would like such a tour to be offered to alumni 
who left the who have left the institution a while ago and will be interesting for them to see what is happening in their alma mater. So someone is also asking uh, Mr. Als, does the CRPM allow guided tours specifically toward they are asking that specifically because of the um, planning to take the alumni on such a tour? Absolutely, yes, we, we do that quite often. I think uh, all the CRPM staff at this point are or qualified as tour guides as well but no definitely we, we can anytime arrange something like that uh, we, we encourage that so please get in touch uh, with myself or any of the other colleagues and we are welcome uh, to, to engage with you and, and welcome you as as the alumni to to show you around the facility anytime okay and then uh, last but not least, uh, this is rather a comment. Someone says, cutting edge technology, accurate reporting and accounting, able building of trust-based relationships, dedication of CRPM team, impacting and making a difference they make in people's lives. That is what CRPM is all about. And I couldn't have put it better myself. A team of people that are not only brilliant, in what they do, but do work that is cutting edge, that is of an international standard. Someone mentioned to me, I remember, that there was an audit from an international German company, and there was, um, if let me just check my note so that I don't end up saying things that aren't true, because I remember I even made a note about it. Yeah, zero findings in audits from an international German company. So that goes to tell you that uh, CRPM is serious business, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's serious business. Even international German companies find nothing wrong for a South African institution. And we know what most South African institutions are like. So this goes a long way in proving the work that CRPM is doing. Um, other than that, I think I'll just like to take a final word from all our panelists. Uh, panelists, any final word? Dr. Rian, is there any final word that you'd like to leave us with? Simple, guys. Keep up the good work. Um, lead the way. You've got everything going for you. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, Mr. Churamurere, any final parting words? Well, I think just like it was said, I mean, uh, you should just keep up doing the good work. And we're very proud to be associated with, uh, with this center. I mean, the impact, the immediate impact, you know, the fact that people's lives are being changed for us, that's really what we, we we want to be supporting. Thank you. And Mrs. Princess Moshwana, what any last words that you would like to leave us with? Um, <laughs> what I could say is, um, first of all, I would like to thank everyone that was involved in changing my life. Um, I just hope that what uh, CPRM has done to me and doesn't end with me. As they can continue helping other people, I hope they get what they need in order for them to assist other people also, because I'm definitely sure there's quite a lot of people out there that need help just like me, who don't have funds um, to access the, the things that I've accessed through them. So, yeah, I just hope that the coaches continue helping other people. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Johan Els, any final words of wisdom? Thank you, Kursana. Um, maybe just from my side, to all the panelists, thank you very much for your support um, in this event. Um, Kursana, for you as well, facilitating that. And in particular, Ms. Jackie Peterson and uh, Joyce Molitsani for putting this together. Uh, we are really uh, humbled by, by all of you and, and we are looking forward to, to taking CR payments to UT to the new heights. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, Professor Fandenhever, what would you like us to um, take away from all of this? Um, the feeling that you get 
when you place that final prestigious, when you change a person's appearance, when you, when you change a person's life, we make them acceptable for society again. Standing back and looking at the work that you've done, that can't be uh, recorded in money. Well, we can help many more of these unfortunate patients. I thank you. Thank you, Prof. Wise words indeed. Wise words indeed. Thank you so much, panelists, for all for engaging us in this discussion and taking part in a discussion that was so needed. Uh, please remember that the link is still open for donations or contributions. You're more than welcome to click on it and contribute whatever that you can toward the CRPM. All right. I'm now going to hand over to the acting, the Valcom Campus Director and the Acting Director in the Office of the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Solomon Obamakula, to just offer us a word of thanks. Prof? Thank you very much, Bosana. Thank you very much. To the Acting Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Alfred Ngowi to colleagues from the Carl and Emily Fuchs uh, Foundation, Dr. Rian Els and Mr. Johan Els, and the Deputy Director, Health Innovation, Department of Science and Innovation, uh, Mr. Bruce Chila Mulele, apologies for the pronunciation, the beneficiary of the CUT, CRPM reconstruction, May Princess Mushwana to Professor Van den Hever, a specialist, a pros, prosthodontist and clinical, clinical advisor to the CUT CRPM team, the director of the CUT. Center for Rapid uh, Prototyping and Manufacturing, uh, Dr. Harry Boyson, distinguished guests, our non-binary friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege to be part of this webinar to celebrate the achievement of the CRPM team with you this afternoon. Please allow me to propose a vote of thanks. Firstly, congratulations to the organizing team, which is the CUT alumni office under the leadership of Mayor Jacqueline Peterson and her team. Thank you to our program director, MX Ngosana Chisa, for the eloquent and excellent way you ran the program. Thank you for guiding us through the program and keeping our spirits high. To our specialists and panelists, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to address us this afternoon. I wish to commend you on your insightful and thoughtful provoking uh, presentations and, and meaningful narratives. Indeed, what you shared with us this afternoon makes us recognize our own blessings and to appreciate the little things in life. And as a result, it is our prayer that we would like to receive more of this kind of support and not only for CUT, but for also for other similar projects. To our colleagues in the Center for Rapid Prototyping and Manufacturing, uh, the work showcased here is the epitome of what CUT strives for. We salute you for the sterling job you have done over the years. The university depends on your expertise to develop this type of innovative solutions, which will benefit our community in a massive way. All of us here can draw inspiration from your innovative solutions. I would also like to acknowledge Professor Alfred Ngowi, our 
acting vice chancellor and principal for welcoming our guests this afternoon. We always depend on your leadership by inspiring us to position CUT as a leading brand in our sector and support for our vision of becoming a leading African University of Technology. To Dr. Els, thank you for your substantial support of our innovations and the exposure you have given to the university over the years. Uh, we anticipate many more fruitful years of collaboration that will help us to maximize stronger partnerships with the Fuchs Foundation. Uh, it offers a sense of comfort that your investment in CRPM, uh, you know, the money is well spent on projects that are changing the lives of, of ordinary people. We have had a, a wonderful testimony this afternoon of somebody who said they took my job, but they, they could not take my joy. I still have my smile. These stories we must use to set the media agenda about the positive narratives on topical national uh, uh, development issues that are changing the lives of ordinary people. To our media friends, we salute your contribution to the advancement of CUT as a leading university of technology. We appreciate the efforts you make in assisting us to positively position the CUT brand. And thank you for your continued uh, pursuit of truth. If there is anything that we share with you is our pursuit of truth and, of truth. and for that, we are truly grateful and we shall re forever remain friends. Ladies and gentlemen, and our non binary friends, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Wise words indeed, wise words. Ladies and gentlemen, we've now come to that part of our program where we have to wrap things up and close. For myself, I'd like to thank everyone that attended the webinar. I'd like to thank everyone that contributed and donated on the website and donated on the link, on the donation link. It was really important and it still is important and it doesn't only end here. Even after the webinar, please do continue supporting the CRPM because they really are doing important work. Uh, for myself, it's always an honor to serve and help wherever I can as a CUT alum, not myself. I'll see you next time and uh, goodbye.